So I'm learning that this might be a common problem on Fords anyway. This is going to be the third Ford that I'm attempting to do this on um, in about a month or a month and a bit anyway. You can see the um, fluids dripping. So if you've got these symptoms, no clutch pedal, you can see the clutch pedal. That's the clutch pedal what I'm pointing at. That's the brake pedal, that's the gas pedal. <coughs> so you can see the clutch pedal is obviously supposed to spring back when you press it down. This one's not doing so. So obviously you can't um, change gear or anything. In fact, with this vehicle, because you have to press the clutch to start it, here I know the door is pushing. I knew. Okay, okay. Come on, let's start. Yeah, there you go. Gotta press the clutch to start. And um, that has got no clutch, it's lost all its fluid. So, what you're gonna need is um, I'll show you. You're gonna need one of these. And I have I have started already. I'm not I don't think I'm gonna get a video of me doing it because it's all awkward and everything in the driver footwell. But um what I will do is I'll try to give you a little breakdown and maybe you can um figure out yours from there. So this is basically the clutch master. It's the one that sends the command to the slave, obviously, hence the name. The slave is gonna be there. You can just see the top of the slave. You see that little silver clip I'll show you so it's running from here and then to this little um, black thing here that the lights now on just there yeah that one there so that's a slave yeah as you can see it's protruding out of the gearbox and the rest of it goes inside the gearbox so um yeah you press the pedal that sends a command to this. It obviously sends the brake fluid down towards the slave, which then um, causes the release bearings and the clutch, which is inside that gearbox, to be released, and you can change gear. So if you've lost that function, it's going to be either or, one of the two. So you just literally follow the um, residue. You follow the trace of brake fluid. As you can see, the slave and the surrounding parts is totally dry and um, the master that was inside is totally wet so I've just removed the airbox this is a 2020 um, Ford Transit and basically all I've done is remove this box there was um, a pipe here air hose that was a little 7 mil Jubilee clip there was a um, mass sensor plug that was just a little um, pull back and release um, what else was there it was a little, um, I'm not even sure what this pipe's for to be fair, but it was there. <laughs> you just gotta squeeze the two tabs and then block that out. Um, these are just grommets. So they just sit inside the um, grommets. And obviously that sits on that little rail at the back. What else do I have to remove to get you out? They, they did plug a few things in there. They're just little things, man. Little, I didn't really need any tools. Maybe I used a pry tool to take out the grommets because it was a bit tough. I've then gone and taken off the, um, I'll show you where is it gone oh yeah this airflow meter so this was the um, air pipe that goes into the air box and then obviously the bottom of it is attached to the air mass that meter there and it plugs in like that so that's how it goes if the air box was still in place yeah so I've taken off this pipe from this Jubilee with a 7mm or a flattered screwdriver I've taken off that one also and then I've had the mass airflow meter sitting out like that can you see what I'm doing? that's there and then that just plucks into there so I've then released that other 7mm Jubilee can you see that on my fingers tapping on? And I've just plucked this out. And then this is just turn and twist. Be careful, turn and twist it and then pluck it out. I've left the plug in because there's no need to take it out, is there? So 
so just got that out of the way. Um, like I say, a few plugs that goes into the um, that goes into this. Not hundred percent sure what it is at the moment, but that was also sitting on the airbox. It had two um, little fixings there. You may or may not have this. I'm not sure. But anyway, got that out of the way because that was on top of the airbox and it was plugged in with these. Just gotta um, rem remove the middles, and then that should just hook out. Um, what else was there? I said I didn't use any tools. I've got loads here, haven't I? Torx. For the tea. Oh, that was for the um, oil. The oil oil filler hose, let's call it. Had a little torque screw. That was also going into the air box. Just there. Got that out of the way. And then last but not least, what else was there? Yeah, that was it. Where's that torque screw? Oh, where's that from? Oh, yeah, this. Oh, me. Yeah, that was this other sensor. <laughs> No, I'm not trying to find the names for these things. I'm guessing it's vacuum related. But anyway, this was also drilled into the side of the airbox and that was fastened with this 8mm nut. I'll show you where that went. Yoink. Just right there, yeah? The um, pipe that was there, I'm going to go and show you right now. So that pipe, I flung... Where did I fling it? Oh, yeah, there it is. So it's just two little squeezy tabs. Squeeze them on both sides and that releases that. This pipe, just for sitting here basically. This goes down there, plucks in there, and then it just plucks and sits into the air box. But it's just another turn and twist, as you can see. And that one goes into this hole here. Yeah. I think the airbox, as much as it's quite a few ancillaries, a lot of them you can just pluck off by hand, the odd pry tool and obviously an um, 8 mil for that and a Torx for that. But yeah, it looks like a lot, but it really isn't. So once you've got that totally out of the way, then you've got access to the other side of the um, master cylinder. And that's it just there. You can just see the pipe and the fixing. I've released the clip. You can see that little silver hook. I've just hooked it out I'm also sprayed it with a bit of a um, maintenance spray so when I'm plucking it it will um, come out quite easily as much as I said I've done two of these already recently I haven't done this one before and the other ones I had to take out the whole clutch pedal so this is obviously going to be um, the fixing on the clutch pedal sorry when you press this we're gonna be having that pushing the fluid that way that that we can see inside the bulkhead will be this I'm assuming sitting like that obviously you've got a plug there that you need to remove and then you've got a bolt here and a bolt there I believe hmm nice and easy looking great You've got this pipe, and you can see from the new one that's um, attaching to the servo, it's just there. So you can easily hook that off with a um, flathead screwdriver or a special pliers. Actually, I will promote this pliers because it's very good, even though the angle's quite not the best, but this is a good pliers, I'll show you. I can't remember the name of it. Just Google, um, I don't know, Jubilee clip pliers or something. I don't know. I don't know what they're called, but they're very good, man. So you press it that way. You can see one mouth is higher and one mouth is lower. So there's one that, that way will um, release it, and then obviously the other way will um, lock it back. They're, they're ideal for those type of clips, though. And. Um, yeah, let's gonna go inside and we're gonna see if we can make sense of this using that. I've done this once I've showed you what to do. I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna try and be squeezing myself and the camera in here. So look, you can see a 10 mil bolt there. So you can see them. Yeah, it's shining on it on the edge of the clutch pedal. So obviously that's your clutch pedal. This one here. And then just inside you can see that little word. You can see the little yellow plunger, the goldy coloured 
um, surface and then obviously you've got the plug so we'll remove that plug then you've got the two bolts um, if you take off the hook from the outside and I'm assuming the next step will just be to pluck it like carefully pull it towards you and that will release it <clears throat> one thing I do have to warn you I was saying one thing I do have to warn you is um, on the edge of this brake pipe there'll be a, like a rubbery like bungee almost like an o-ring quite thick it's a seal you need to be careful when you're taking this one off to make sure that's still there before you put it back unless of course you have a replacement but um, yeah I thought I'd share this video it's a com it seems like it's a common problem so um, and I don't think too many people are, are sure how it's done or where it's located so hopefully my little rundown will be helpful so that's that seal that I was um, trying to mention it's that little dong rubbery dongle on the top that, that can come off so just be careful and make sure it's there when you're putting your new one can you see it? that's that one there I did say I went off alright cool man listen man if you guys start seeing my vids in that what's knowing it from April which I think is tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow I'm going really reduced to talking I didn't know I was such a chatbox until I started making videos but yeah I thought I'd just show you man because if you're trying this for the first time how would I rate this on technical ability? Brrr. Um, I don't think there's going to be too much more than these 10mm bolts I'd probably say about 7, 7 out of 10 so these are a bit tight as well I don't want you guys to feel like I'm setting you up but they are running out as you can see um, we're going to take off this plug as well see if I can do that while you're filming just look at the little squeezy tab down the back and pluck that out yeah. can you see the tab there? squeeze that, get that out of the way you want to use a ratchet spanner? have you got something like this? Well, as you can see there's not much space in those bolts don't get it trapped oh, there's the last one, the last one I'm going to just get the ratchet on there and obviously anti-clockwise to release you yeah. oh look at me, I'm actually catching the footage and I've plucked off the pipe on the other side bulk so maybe if Ford wants to be nice it will just be a case of once these two bolts are out just plucking the thing out alright this is going to probably trap the ratchet let's see, no there's still space you can probably run it out to the end it's just fabric on the other side to be fair it's getting looser I know the majority of people that drive these trannies they're pretty DIY savvy and a lot of them are using them for work and stuff work horses uh, who's got time to go and carriage and stuff you just want to take out a 10 mil spanner let's fix that yourself quickly and then go do your next job right alright cool so let's have a look at the bolts out um, I don't know if I'm going to carry them filming let's see it'd be nice if I could drop it out while I'm recording but it's just awkward as beep 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 awkward as a mofo ah oh, I saw hurting my ribs in it I'm lying anyway alright listen I've just taken out the last bolt I can see a tab there Look, here's so I'm suspecting it will still hold. Otherwise, you better just come out when I pull you. You silly thing. You ready? Alright, let's get the pedal out of the way. Um, let's see if we have any movement. Oh, what a mother chucker. Alright, get that from there. What's holding you now? Oh, it's got movement, yes. Oh, something. I think it's that silly tab. Might have to pray it. It's two tabs. Let's go and look at the new one, shall we? Might make things a bit clearer for us again. Let's hope we didn't pull out the wrong bolts. Alright, let's have a look at the new one. What was I filming or was I just talking? Alright, so this is what we're looking at. That's gone and so is that. Remember, we had it like that, didn't we? Underneath, and I said that they look like tabs, and they are. So, that one's like screws. So they're opposite each other, aren't they? Mm. I'm gonna probably use a pry tool of some sort and try and peel the um, metal, and then hopefully it should slide out. We can't see another attachment apart from on the hose, obviously. But that's out and they're out see that's pretty much it maybe there's something that's good yeah there's going to be something running through that hole i haven't looked at sorry let's go and see what's running through there and obviously don't forget to remove this pipe which is um the one in the servo you might want to well you probably would have lost most of your brake fluid to be fair but you might want to put something underneath that to catch it let's see if i can uh, Just 
skinny jaws to release. <laughs> Not the best example, was it? Use a screwdriver. Use a flattened screwdriver and just take it off the hook. It's just, it just hooks around each other. Alright. You don't even have to reuse it, you can just get a normal Jubilee to be fair. But this is what you have. Oh, I didn't even put anything to catch it. Alright, I'm gonna go for it. Alright, let's go back to our mess inside and see if we can um, wriggle that off while I'm still recording. Oh, we didn't check what was in the other hole from the plunger, did we? What is it? Oh, we can see through that gap. Oh, nothing. There's nothing. That doesn't make any sense. This has got to sit on the pedal or something, no? Alright, go on, we'll figure that out after. Right, let's try and get this business out of here. Yeah, that was a bit of force and stuff, but we're not putting it back. Did you see how I did it? I hope you did. I basically used this. And I just levered it. You saw what was holding it. We've got a silly little attachment here as well to the um, slave. So we're going to try and just hook that out. I hope you saw that. And then we should be able to pull it towards us. Um, and she comes. Something. Oh, yeah, the light pipe, isn't it? Oh, Bobix, I'm not even filming. Alright, here you go. And then she comes. Yeah? I am actually quite happy with that video. Hope I um, caught it all and it comes out quality. Because I thought that was going to be quite awkward to record, but yeah, that's it, man. And if you've got it out, so I pried it quite hard. As you can see, it's actually bust the tabs. And that's probably the only way to get it out, who knows, or the quickest way anyway. So, look here they are. Yeah, don't waste your time trying to look after these. Obviously you can see, because obviously you can see this is knackered kaputte. Oh, let's use the pry tool. Forced it out. So yeah, that's it, man. Master cylinder on a Ford Transit 2020. It's a 70 plate. Hope that's helpful. All right, so this second part of the video that I'm going to bring in is actually from another vehicle. It's another recording and it's the same repair. I remember that I didn't actually mention this part in my first video. So whilst I was doing this second um, repair, I thought I'd just record it and I'll add it to it. Um, when I met this vehicle the first time, the very first one, it had already been detached from the clutch pedal and I was unaware. So when I've gone to put it back, I didn't realise until I'm actually doing the bleed and I've looked and I've realised it's still detached. That's why it's not been mentioned in the first video. So I've then now re-recorded this on the second vehicle to try and add it to this video to try and um, avoid any confusion for you guys. So I hope that's clear and I hope you understand what's happened. I've done one of these before and um, as it goes in the job, for me anyway, the more you do these, it becomes, which is just basically practice makes perfect. And that's what creates competent technicians. So this is the second time I'm doing this and I'm obviously way more confident. Anyway, let me not bore you. On my last one, can you see that yellow spongy thing? And then if you, I'll zoom in to where it pivots on the clutch pedal. So if I go in, you see the yellow spongy thing, and then you can see, there with me, this part here. So that pivot, that's the clutch pedal. This yellow thing and the rest of the um, molding, let's say, is um, the master cylinder. This little um, disc looking shaped thing, that comes off. And that's basically gonna sit in the groove of the clutch pedal. When I did my last one, this little locking device had already been removed. And um, you see, you see, you see, move it there. I, I could easily use a tool like this to take this off. You just have to kind of push it. It's like it's horseshoe shaped, so it have an opening, and you're gonna just push it the opposite way to the opening, and it will come off. I don't think I showed this on my previous video because it wasn't there, and it was the first time I come across it myself. So the actual issue with that one was this part of the um, master cylinder had sheared off. But if I'd met one like this, I would have said, yeah, you have to remove this from the clutch pedal. If I press the clutch pedal, which is right here, obviously I'm zoomed in now, so I'll zoom back out. You should see that's that's what's gonna cause the movement. Ah. Not meant to happen. But anyway, this one's faulty, which is why I'm replacing it. But as you can see, kind of, and then move the pedal. That's what moves the uh, master, and that's what sends the um, pressure to the reservoir. And it makes the command, basically, which gets the fluid travelling um, to the slave, and then it releases the, um, releases the um, well, release bearing, which then um, engages the clutch. But well, I'm not telling you how the clutch works right now, but um, I am telling you that if you're going to replace this, first you'll need to remove this little locking device, this little tab, little horseshoe one. It should be able to pivot or slide off. 
I'm trying not to lose it because you probably need it to replace the new one. And yeah, as described before, because I'm about to attack this one, you got them two 10 mils there. Can you see them? And then obviously you got to take off the plugs and just attach the plugs where they attach to the rest of the um, pedal assembly. All right, that should do, and that should be helpful. Uh, I thought I'd help you, man, because that clip is not the easiest. And that's how it looks, little horseshoe. Get a hook like this, and if you, you can push, push it a little bit opposite to the way that it is, then you can get a hook like this into the gap. And then you just can, um, come on. And you can just pull it backwards, basically. And then that will get that off. This will focus, come on, focus. So that's what you want. So that should just be able to slide off now. I'll probably use a pry tool. So like this. And that gets it off. Yeah, well that's helpful. Then obviously you want to go inside the engine bay, remove the box and whatnot. All right, how do you get on, man? Come on, tell the truth. Come on, be truthful. Like, did you do it? Did you get it in? Is a new one in? Straightforward, right? Two holes. Thread the top holes through the hole. All right, let me not waste your time. Listen, I know I signed out earlier, but then I've remembered I didn't show you um, how to bleed it. Because, yeah, putting the arms um, master in is like literally half of the job. And then I've put in mine in. Oh, come on, man. Stop trying to make me make silly noises. Anyway, I was putting mine in and then um, I didn't realize how much of a bitch that bolt was at the back. <laughs> I thought, oh, no. My YouTube followers are going to be able to get this done. Found, made it easier. Was to get this um, plug out of the way. Remember we hooked it out from, um, I don't know where them. I think this one I think I hooked it out from. Well, I hooked it out from the one above as well. I don't know how clear that is. I'm not sure that clear at all. Yeah, look. So there's a little hook in there. I hooked it out from, hooked it out from there. Got it out of the way totally. That was like the main thing that was blocking. Oh, I didn't even take the spanner off. Anyway, I hooked it out, the plug out of the way and the wire and everything. And then it should be easier for you to get this back bolt in. I kind of, um, it's hard to explain, but that's what I did anyway. That was, that's the best tip I can give you. Listen, if you can't do it on mobile, just give me a call and I'll come and do it for you. I'll charge you nicely though, man. Anyone that can't do anything I've done in my videos and then they ask me to come and do it for them, I'm going to charge you double. No, I'm joking. All right, go on. I'll show you how to bleed in a bit because that's necessary. After this. I might talk you through the bleed. Yeah, I might talk you through it. Um, I showed you earlier, you've got the um, master there and then you've got the slave. So you're going to use the slave to bleed it. You've got a little um, rubber grommet, little dust cover. Just want to get rid of that first. So that just plucks off. And then we've got probably a 10 mil, is that? Oh wow, it's a hand one. So you can see that little part where it's just a bit shiny, a little bit moist from where I've taken off the cap. So you'll just probably twist that with your fingers and you'll twist it anti-clockwise. But before you open it, you want to um, pressurize the um, brake system. Now you can do this by either pumping the pedal, you go inside, pump it a few times and hold it down, then you'll have to get somebody to, no sorry, you'll fill it up first, you'll fill up the reservoir with brake fluid, then you'll do the whole pumping. You probably um, need to do it with your hand first because obviously once you push the pedal it's going to sit down, then you'll pull it back, then you'll try and pump it, create some pressure, then you'll hold it down flat and then you'll come and open it. Now see, so if that will be a two-man um, job, two-woman job, two-person job. Um, to do it singly, single-handedly. Also, yeah, I replaced that um, clamp. It's not, it's a bit blurred. Yeah, look, I just put a normal um, Jubilee on it. It was a bit difficult to try and um, re-clamp at the position. And I moved this hose, but yeah, I just used the um, hose clamp. It's a lot easier. If you want to over tight it, make sure it does what it's supposed to. So I'm gonna um, pressurize the system. So I said, yeah, you would have topped it up with brake bleed if you were doing it with another person. If you're self bleeding, you'll need something like this. This one's a very good one. It's um, I've, it's well used. Um, oh look, there you go. So it's a Sealy brake and clutch bleeding system. I've actually got a video on how to bleed and how to bleed the brakes, which is virtually the exact same method. So what we want to do, this um, is obviously going to be the cap that's going to be similar to the um, brake fluid reservoir cap on your vehicle. You want to run that on. Now you don't have to fill up the um, reservoir with brake fluid because you're going to fill up the actual 
what, what is the name of this? You're going to fill up the bleeder with brake fluid. As you can see, there's some in there already. But we're going to fill that up. And then obviously, once we pressurize it, which is just by pumping this handle, and then you should see that needle showing you how much pressure and how much PSI you've got. And then obviously, once it's pressurized, it's forcing um, brake fluid through the whole system. Then you'll come and you'll um, open the um, little valve there. You'll turn that anti-clockwise. It's just that there. And then um, that should push all the air out and eventually all the um, brake fluid until, it's, until all the air is gone and it's just flowing. I'll probably put a rubber pipe on the top of that just to save the mess because um, once it's flowing it's obviously going to get everywhere brake fluid's not one of those things you want to get everywhere but um, yeah once you've um, pressurised it released it got rid of all the um, pressure let's go inside try it maybe um, start it up and whatnot take it for a little drive maybe like a little around the block and come back and then do it again then re-bleed it again I might prop this somewhere and you can watch how I do it and then hopefully it'll be helpful the pressure going up slightly I'm not sure what they recommended is to be fair I didn't read the instructions but if you um if you research or look for this tool it comes with instructions and stuff Obviously, don't go past the red, that's why it's there. So I'll put it there, and that's when I'm just under um, 30 psi. And then that will hold pressure. To release the pressure, obviously, that's going to be the um, release just there. But, um, that should have pressurized the system now, so now we're going to open that bleeder. I'm probably going to put a bit of spray on it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to run this pipe on top of the nipple and I'm just going to twist it open to the left. See that was very easy, it's just, just like any little, um, I don't know, twisty thing like a volume button, just turn it. And that's opened up now and then the brake fluid is travelling, travelling, travelling and then it should start filling up this. So while it's um, pushing out all the fluid, it should be also pushing um, out any air that's in there. So you can see it's gradually filling up. Yeah, there it is. That pretty much should be it. What I'll do in live time recording, no editing, I'll um, lock it and then we'll go inside together with the um, system. Yeah, I'll depressurize the system actually and we'll um, see what it's like. But yeah, that's filling up, so that should have pushed out all the air. Look, there's a lot more in there now. release the pressure on this and we're gonna go and see what our pedals like let's see if we've got pressure ah poppy choppy 
Yeah, so what I'd forgotten and um, failed to realise is, obviously, like I say, I, when I met this vehicle, the um, clutch pedal was already detached from the actual master cylinder. So with putting it back, I forgot to um, reattach it. And um, so after bleeding it, yeah, there still was no clutch pedal, as you can see. Um, I didn't realise that was because it was detached, so I've gone ahead and bled it again a second time which ended up just making a mess <laughs> and then i'll finally realize that it hasn't been attached i figured it out basically and then i'm just going to fast forward to the part where i've figured it out like i say i um the part that i i mean this part of the video um i mentioned earlier when i re-recorded this repair on another vehicle That's a few seconds, we're going to lock it and then we're going to go and have a look. It's locked in place. This we're going to release. Hopefully that pedal has sprung itself right, back so up. Um, yeah, do what here. I did apart from that part. Sure, yeah, I Remember, I was um, pondering what this hole was for, saying that hole's got to be for something. It must go on the clutch pedal. And then we had a little look into it, and then we kind of forgot. Well, yeah, I just left it hanging off. So no wonder the clutch pedal wasn't working. It wasn't going to make any type of difference. Like I said, I didn't... This side, so the pivot goes in there. Yeah, this pivot. Let me go underneath. So you can see the clutch pedal. And then you can just see where it now is hooked on, whereas before it wasn't. So that's what you want to do. And it's giving me a clutch pedal now, if you can watch. It's doing what it's supposed to. I'm ready to put my foot on that. She looks proper. the light there so you can see what occurs solid stiff as anything can affect all right not going to be able to start the vehicle just yet because um we've got that box and all those stuff off we're going to put that back and then yeah that should be good to go so yeah i hope that's helpful man and i think that's it <laughs> that is actually right